we have no problem. We've seen that beautiful with the light is, and there's another thing to do in the night. You can go and you can look about the wind farm. It was, there was some romantic with it also. The wind farms is also good for the economy. Yeah, because it's not necessary to import oil from other countries. We can do it in ourselves. It's good for the country, it's good for everything. small they are yep, and if you turn around you see how big they are <laughs> we have a lot of anger we were afraid of our tourists we were afraid of our sign we were afraid of everything there are so many mills just outside on the sea so it, it's difficult for me to change we were afraid of the noise we are we were afraid that the sun will make spots in the wings that we could see in the land. We were afraid of our sailors. We are living on a lot of sailors in the New State Harbor. But uh, none of these problems have we seen. So I'm on this trip to learn more about wind power. Um, I work at Cape Cod Community College in the Environmental Technology Program and we got a National Science Foundation grant to develop a renewable energy curriculum. We're going to be offering a certificate program at the college and we're also partnering with the two technical schools and they're actually installing um, solar panels, solar thermal, and then they're both going to get wind, small wind installations at their campuses. Everybody knows, you know, coal, gas and oil are a finite resource, we're going to run out soon and we need to be diversifying our energy base as well as renewable energy is clean. We need these windmills in America be because we need energy. Oh, yeah, this is Dylan Brady. He's seven years old. He's in first grade at Stony Brook Elementary and he knows quite a bit about renewable energy. Europe is definitely leading the way. Japan is, is doing great things with solar energy. Europe's doing a lot with wind and, and solar as well. So. They're going to be basically you know, taking the lead in the world. The United States is still fiddling around and talking about drilling an Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, which is absurd. I'd like to be a windsmith. I want to get my hands dirty, climb the towers, work on the gearboxes. I want to do a job where I can make a living and you know, do something that makes a contribution to society, something I can feel good about. If we could achieve 20% of power like they have here in good wind years in the past, I mean, who knows how many coal plants we could shut down? Who knows how much we could clean our air? So that's what I'd like to see. And I think we can see that. Well, I wish everybody in the Cape and Islands could have been in our shoes yesterday on the boat. Um, I never will forget it. 
ever, ever, ever. And I hope to God we see them over in Nantucket Sound. I said it before, I'll say it again. I don't want to depend on our friends in Arabia. I'm inspired. I think that we could make this happen and need to make it happen as soon as possible in our own backyards. Oh, wow. Sailing up to this wind farm yesterday in the middle of the Baltic Sea was thrilling and, and being right underneath of one of the, you know, of, of one of the turbines just was sort of physically overwhelming and then we shut off the boat and there was this whirring sound and the ocean and some ducks and a sailboat and it was really, um, it was cool. Thirty-five Americans from Cape Cod, New York State, Vermont, and Nantucket traveled over 4,000 miles to see for themselves what an offshore wind farm looks like and what its impacts really are. They found a benign, simple technology, bettering the lives of a considerate and proud citizenry. The eyes of America are focused on Cape Cod during this debate. It is the debate that will shape the energy future of America. Perhaps we could learn from our neighbors.